Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll start with some thanks. Thank you, Ernest and Evelyn. Thank you, Bob. And special thanks to Bill and Scott Wolf, uh, my chair. <laughs> um, OK, so uh, a lot of the work we're doing here at Rady involves looking at large data sets that, that are generated naturally when, when people do business in the field and trying to come up with insights about why they happen and how can we improve what we do in business in order to create more value and better serve our customers. There's too much work to talk about in eight minutes, so I just pick one example. But before that, when I say customer psychology, what do I mean? Well, we really observe is customer behavior, and customer behavior is the, is the intersection of three things. Who the customer is, the time that whatever happens happens, and the situation. That intersection is really what we're trying to find out when we, when we investigate customer psychology. And trying to do that from um, a lot of data that is numeric um, is an interesting challenge, and we have a lot of faculty that are very good at this. And so I'm going to describe uh, one example of a project. And this example starts um, not long ago, a few years ago, we moved houses, um, wanted to get closer to UCSD. And when you buy a house closer to UCSD, you run the risk of buying the house of someone famous. So I end up uh, living in Sally Ride's house. And so the house came with a lot of NASA memorabilia. And um, not knowing anything about that, I looked online to what I could find. And um, in particular, I looked at Amazon, and I searched for um, American uh, space memorabilia. And I got this set of results. Now, two things come out, uh, especially since I'm a behavioral researcher in marketing. Um, two things stood out for me. One is I have no idea how much things should cost in this category. Absolutely no idea. And the other thing is that one of these prices is, is really high. <laughs> and, and, and you take a step back and you say, well, how does, how does encountering such an ex extremely high price affect customers? And in and, and thinking about, about what we know, I realized that we actually don't know. Talking to managers, managers said, you know, when we post a high price, we think that that causes the customer to understand that we have very high quality products or offerings. Talking to customers, you realize that maybe that's not the case. That's where we, you know, we, we find a good research question. So we're lucky enough to collaborate with a company um, that allowed us to answer this question of what's the effect of extremely high price? And is it important that I had no idea how much things should cost in this category, meaning I had a lot of uncertainty. So collaborating with, a, with um, Fiverr, I don't know if you've heard about Fiverr. Fiverr is the largest marketplace for online freelance digital services. So there's a lot of data, and you could buy services for many, many different categories, some of them which you know something about, some of them which you don't know something about, and that allows us a good uh, testing point. So for example, if you go to Fiverr and you want articles and blog posts, and you click that category, you will get a, a display of potential freelancers that offer you articles and, and, and blog posts for different prices. Um, and, and I'm showing you what it looks on the screen. The data we have represents what people saw on the screen. And since this is a very large marketplace, this is very large uh, data, and, and particularly rich in what people clicked on and what they ended up purchasing. Um, and what they saw. Um, and one of the aspects of this is that what people see on the screen varies quite a bit. That variation allows us to try to identify different effects that happen when people see various offerings. So more, more specifically, if we look at this particular uh, offering that Fiverr calls a gig, it's offered for a particular price. This is the most expensive price in this particular offering set of 12. Uh, which is $45. It's, it's seen here in very small font, so you can't actually check if I'm right. Um, but, but just like a person saw this set of offerings, another person saw this set of offerings, which has exactly the same 11 other offerings, but this particular offering was replaced with, with a really expensive offering, almost $2,000. Right? That looks like my Amazon example from the beginning. Now, what pretty clever data analytics allows us to do is to say, let's treat this natural variation as if somebody designed the perfect experiment for us. Meaning we can think about the, the times where people saw non-extreme options as the control, 
and times where they did see an extreme option, keeping everything else constant as a treatment, just like we would in a, in a laboratory experiment, which allows us to say, what is this effect of, of an extreme price, right? Isolating this from every other possible effect. So that's what the analytics allows us to do. And um, we can really try to answer the question in this context, what is the effect of an extremely high price? I don't know what, what, what you're thinking. Uh, just adding one more thing. This is articles and blog posts. This is an example from translation. These are, these are subcategories of services where I don't get to know whether the, what, what's offered is good. I don't get to see previous works because of privacy of other customers. And all I have to go by is some description the seller describes their work. Contrast that with other product categories or service categories like logo design, where a logo designer can show past logos that they designed and I can scroll through them and see and get a sort of an experience or sample what this uh, freelancer can do. And so remember my question about uncertainty? The conjecture is that, and we can prove it, that when you buy stuff that you can visually see and sample, you have less uncertainty. You kind of have better sense of is it worth the price that, that's uh, been quoted. And so we're going to look at, at the difference between these kind of subcategories where there's a lot of uncertainty and subcategories where there's less uncertainty to see whether, in fact, it mattered that I had no idea what NASA memorabilia should cost. So uh, to cut the long story short, uh, relative to uh, offerings that did not have extreme prices, which are level one on this y-axis, offerings with extreme high prices had a 40% reduction in purchase rate. This means that the CEOs who said, oh, people see these high offerings, they think we sell quality goods, were completely wrong. What seems to happen is customers go like, whoa, we don't understand this. Or these cheap offers, they look pretty bad relative to this expensive one, but the expensive looks expensive, so I'm not going to buy it. And so we follow the customers over time, this is a lingering effect. Whoever sees this on the first time becomes a pretty bad customer from lifetime value perspectives. And this is not the case in low uncertainty categories. If you look at logo design and other categories where people can sample work, this has very little to no effect. Okay? And so the CEO, of course, doesn't accept this easily and he goes like, well, is it really about uncertainty? So, well, we can test that because new customers are going to have much more uncertainty than repeat customers. And that's exactly what we find. This negative effect is purely driven by new customers in subcategories of services that have a lot of uncertainty. That's really the, the big effect. And that effect, by the way, lasts five years if you follow the data. And the CEO also didn't believe us as much. It says, is it still the case that it's happening? So we got new data and it replicates and we find exactly the same effect. So if you're thinking of including very high prices in categories with a lot of uncertainty, I wouldn't. And I don't have time to get into this, but we can show in, with further data analysis that this is really about trust in the platform. When, when you see this extreme price variation and you don't understand it, you go like, oh, they must not know what they're doing. And you decrease the brand equity and the trust in the platform itself. Now, not having in, enough time, I'm just going to showcase a bunch of other work done with phenomenal colleagues here at Rady on gender discrimination awareness on aggregate market responses to pandemic or other uh, catastrophes, um, to cultural communication style effect on global trade, to how people tip online in environments that, that where tipping is not obvious, and various other uh, really interesting works that I'm happy to talk to you at the break. Thank you. Thank you.